Hello, welcome to another Rio how-to. Today's how-to is about the snake roll, how to make a snake roll. It's a beautiful cast for the spay angler, but it's also a great cast for the single-handed angler. The thing about a snake roll, it's a very dynamic, high line speed cast. And this is a cast that has what's called an airborne anchor, the line's in the air all the time. And a couple of things to know about this snake roll is this cast is always done when there's no wind, like now, or when there's a downstream wind. Those are your perfect times for a snake roll. This is not a good cast to do when the wind's going up river because the line will blow right into your face and snag you and hook you and you'll hate yourself. So always make sure there's a downstream wind or no wind at all on the snake roll. A snake roll is always cast with a downstream arm. What that means is that as I face across the river right now, my right arm is down river. So I'm gonna make a cast with my right hand in top of the rod in control. If I was on that side of the river facing this way, my left hand is on the downstream side, so the snake roll will be a left-handed cast. So that's just to give you a rough idea of what cast, what hands, what way the winds are. If you use gadget lines and sink tips and heavy flies like that, this probably is not the cast for you because the snake roll is so dynamic. It's a great cast for things like scandy lines, double tapers, traditional spay lines. It's a wonderful cast. There's lots of line speed and beautiful stuff like that. But a gadget line and a sink tip and a heavy fly, you don't want the line in the air and kicking around with lots of line speed because they jerk and bounce and they become unstable. So if you use Skagit lines, this probably isn't the cast for you, certainly if you're a beginner at this. In similar wind conditions, the double spay is the cast to use with a downstream wind on the Skagit line. But if you want to learn the snake roll and you've got yourself a Scandi line like this, come on up, I'll show you exactly how to do it. All right, so as I mentioned, the snake roll is a cast utilized on the downstream arm, which is my right arm in this case, with a downstream wind or no wind. This cast is a cast that has a line in the air, an airborne cast. And what that means is any line that is in the air, gravity will pull down to the water. And this is a, therefore a cast called a touch and go cast. And that means you should start your four stroke the moment the line touches the water when you go forward. We're gonna look at the, the, the D-loop stroke here. It's the hardest thing to get right. And the easiest way to look at the D-loop stroke is simply take your rod apart. Just use the butt section first and pretend you're at school. Pretend this is a giant piece of chalk and you've got a giant blackboard chalkboard in front of you and the teacher says, right, Billy, I want you to go up there and draw me an E for egg and make it as big as the chalkboard. All right, teacher, I'll do that. And you put your bit of chalk on the chalkboard and you draw a large letter E. And, and the teacher goes, well done, Billy, you've got an E. Good for you. That's what the snake roll is. It's an E. You're gonna draw an E shape with your rod but because it's a cast, you can't cast from here. You have to cast from here. So the only difference is you draw your E and at the end of the E, you're lifting up to the key, the key position. So that is the shape. And you want to practice this as many times as you can. Don't even worry about the line and the rest of the rod. Just getting to grips with what shape it is. It's flat back. It climbs as it goes forward. It dips down, it comes underneath and it climbs up. To the key position and like every cast that key position is right opposite where your forward stroke should be so practice that draw it once you've got kind of a synopsis a feel of it an idea of the shape put your rod together and let us have a look at that e shape as a cast the rod tip ring should start about level with your hat and then it should drag back horizontally nice and flat the same level a few degrees, a few feet back behind you like that. That's the flat part of the E. Then the rod's gonna climb and come over, climbing as it comes over, climbing, then starting to drop down. As it reaches towards the far bank, it starts to drop down further, levels out, still about hat high, levels out, and then from there climbs up to the key position. And in this key position is where I'm gonna wait for the line to drop. And the moment the line drops and touches the water, I make my regular forward stroke. And like all forward strokes of the spay rod, they consist of these two movements, the loading move and the accelerating pivot move. We're not gonna dwell about that. that. We'll dwell on that in cast like the switch cast. That's a better place to practice your forward stroke. I wanna get your setups right at this point of the game and your forward strokes will evolve gradually. But if your setups right, if your D-loop stroke's not right, the cast is not gonna work. So that's what we're gonna focus on here, getting the D-loop stroke right with the snake roll. So once again, here's what the cast looks like. Hat, back, up and over, round, pull back, splash, and there's the go the moment I get the splash. In terms of speed, this, this whole thing has a slow, medium, fast tempo. It is 
slow, medium, quick, splash and go. That's your mantra, that's your slow, medium, quick. A great analogy that I like to use in my classes, I think, is, is just imagine somehow you're in Italy and it's summer and it's a summer's evening and you've got some sports car and the, and the roof is down and you're driving these just these hairpin bends around the Alps. Zoom, 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 zoom. And you've got two bends with a snake roll. You've got, you're driving this way and then you've got a hairpin bend there. And you're driving that way and you've got a bend here coming back this way. The speed, I don't want you to crash and die. I, I want you to drive your Ferrari round this bend and you've got this lovely straight, you're coming into this bend here. I want you to drive around the bend and then accelerate away from the bend. Don't crash, don't go into the bend with speed. Don't go into the bend. Don't have the speed going that way. The speed always comes away from the bend. That's the analogy. I'm driving round, I go round, I go round the bend and I accelerate away from the bend. Right? You can think of an analogy if that works for you, or you can think slow, medium, fast, whichever way works. The key is, this is the slowest part, this is medium, when you go round, there's the speed, that acceleration back is the speed. So that's the tempo of the cast. Now when you're learning a cast, you have objectives. And the objective of this first move, the D-loop stroke, is to lay a straight anchor. There's this terminology in spade casting called the train tracks where your anchor lands and your forward stroke is parallel to it. You always want your forward stroke parallel to that anchor. So if I'm snake rolling, right now I'm going to pick a, a tree that's on the far bank and there's a pile of rocks underneath that tree and that means that through a good snake roll two things have to line up with that. One, the rod tip, when I finish my E shape and I get up to the key position, I want my rod to be pointing exactly opposite that rock and that bush. But the second thing is your anchor. The line should lift out of the water from down here, come all the way around and land on the water facing that same bush and rocks. I'm going to show you a couple of options. Here's a, here's a good one where the line comes up, landed, facing the rock, rod is opposite. That's a perfect alignment. So I've got, all I've got to do is tie my forward stroke right and I've got a really good snake roll. And here's a, a bad one where the line isn't aligned. I come up, I move around. There's the line, it's in a, fair, in a huge curve in the water. My rod is off kilter, it's not pointing at the, at the bush. I need to be more opposite here. So it's really important that when you get these snake rolls and you're practicing your snake rolls, you're practicing getting your D-loop and your anchors always aligned with where your forward stroke will go. Then it's just a matter of getting your timing right. One of the best things you can use when you're spade casting are your lugs, your ears. You wanna to listen to your cast. You're going to see something here and I'm going to hear something, you'll probably hear it too. And that is when you make the right snake roll, you're going to get a quiet cast with not a lot of spray. Here's a bad one. Now you heard probably a lot of spray. You probably saw a great plume of white spray back in this area here. That is a bad snake roll. Far too much line on the water. The cast is inefficient. All the energy has been sucked out by the spray noise and the line on the water. I'm going to do that again, but this time I want you to count. One, two, three, between when you see the line touch the water and when I go forward. Right, this is the wrong one. Touch, go. Right, there's a big long gap between touch and go. Therefore, there's a big spray. Therefore, there's this noise. Therefore, the cast is rubbish. That's wrong. So it's much quicker than touch, go. Touch, go is what it should be. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'll time it correctly. If you do that same count, you probably won't even get to one because it's touch and go. Round, watch the line, touch, go. And as a result, when you time it like that, there is no spray, there's no noise, and the cast is beautiful. It's wonderful, it's efficient, it's effortless, and it zips out there. So real important, listen and be aware of your timing of your cast. Watch your line in the air to splash and go. Now, if you get this right, what you're trying to achieve is you are trying to land the fly line about a rod length from you. So I'm going to splash the water here. That's one rod length from me. I want my fly line to land about there. If it lands further away from there, it's not going to be an effective spade cast. There's too much discrepancy between the anchor point and your forward stroke. And if it lands above you, it's probably dangerous and going to snag you and hit you. So you want to just practice that. And it's all about circumference. If my rod travels, say, 20 feet circumference of that shape, that's a certain number. 
Now my rod could travel 30 feet circumference, that's a bigger path. My rod could travel five foot circumference. Right? You can make small shapes, big shapes, medium shapes. All those are influenced by how much line you've got. So keep changing your circumference, how long that path is, until you start to find you're getting the anchor point to land right in that splash zone. And then the other part of the snake roll to understand is, is you want to look at your wading wake, right? When you're wading in water like this, there's this little riffle here, there's a wake. And, I, and the ideal cast is that loop-to-loop -loop connection between my leader and my fly line will land in that wake and it will land in that splash. That's where I'm trying to land it for the perfect snake roll. The further away from that landing zone it lands, the worse the cast will be. So that's all a combination of circumference and speed. Too small or too slow, doesn't get anywhere near you too big and too fast, the thing can go whizzing behind you and off kilter. So you just got to practice your, your rhythm, your tempo, and develop a stroke length and speed that consistently lands the line tip in your wading wake. And that is the perfect setup of a snake roll. So hopefully from that you've got a couple of nuggets. I hope you get out and try the snake roll if you haven't done it before. It is a wonderful cast, whether you use two-handed rods or one-handed rods. Remember, it's a downstream wind cast. Remember, it's a better cast to utilize with things like Scandi heads and double tapers and spay lines. And above all, just get out and have fun. It's a wonderful, fun cast. Great with that downstream wind. And that's it. So hopefully today you enjoyed today's how-to, how to make a snake roll. If so, get out in the water, practice it, and master this beautiful cast. Many thanks for watching another Rio Howdy.